attention, brothers and sisters, to the verse 18, the 8 portion. Well, I'll say the whole verse 18. And he said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. With that passage read, brothers and sisters, I want to again minister part two of a conquering church. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. Thank you once again for allowing me to stand and proclaim the goodness of God in the land of the living. For it is a blessing to learn about you, to talk about you, to read about you, to preach about you. It is a blessing, Lord, and it is an honor. Father God, to stand before your people knowing that you died for them, Father God. Amen. So I don't take this time lightly, Master, and I pray that you allow the Holy Ghost, Father God, to come into our midst, meet us once again where we're at. Open up the mysteries of God and teach us, Father God, the awesome, magnificent, majestic word of God. Lord, we'll give you all the glory, we'll give you all the honor, we'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we all say together. Amen. 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 You may be seated, brothers and sisters. A conquering church. You're not a weak church. You're not a sick church. You're not a depressed church. You're not a afflicted church. You're not an addicted church. You're not a depressed church. But you are a conquering church. Last week, God just wanted me to just touch a little bit just to let you know that a church is not a building. Mm -hmm. Often when we say we go to church, that phrase is wrong because you can't go to church. The church is the ecclesia. The church is the people of God. Amen. The church is the nation of God, brothers and sisters. If I if I was to give an illustration of the church, I would tell you, uh, being that it is Mother's Day, that the church is the bride of Christ. The church is the thing that God has called to conceive. Are y'all listening to me? And he, through our intimacy with Christ, we conceive, brothers and sisters, and we are supposed to push out in this earth realm where God has put down inside of us. You heard me say this last week that every believer is supposed to be walking around pregnant. God has called every believer to give birth to something. That is how the will of God uh, that is set in heaven will reign in earth is that God will deposit something in his bride. Are y'all listening That's to me? Good. And your job is to push it out, brothers. And through all the pain, through all the hurt, through all the affliction, God is calling his bride to push. And this is a season. Not that the church becomes stale. Not that the church becomes complacent. But this is the season that God is calling his church to push. That's good. All right. All right. I ask the question, is there anybody pregnant out there? Yes, sir. Good God, mother. We need pregnant church. Yes. We need people walking around fat, full of the things of God, full of the word of God, full of the anointing of God. Are y'all listening yes, to me? Yes. That's what's going to change the world. When the world sees us full, on fire, caught up. God told me to tell the church in Antioch, Amen. When we were in Antioch, that God needs a drunk church. That's good. Right. I was talking about Sister Anna, and she was praying to God so hard and caught up in the spirit with God so hard that the prophet Eli thought she was drunk. But the world needs to see us, us caught up in God so much, full of the Holy Ghost so much that they can perceive that there's something different about you. Yes, right. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. You are the church. And in this passage, brothers and sisters, Jesus is hanging out with his disciples. <coughs> They're having some downtime. 
through all the ministry, through all the feeding, through all the preaching, having some downtime. Quiet time, yes. Are y'all listening to Amen. me? He's chilling with his disciples. <laughs> God wants me to ask you, who are you disciples? Because if you're born again, if you know God rests inside of you, you know God will has opened the windows of heaven and poured you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. And, and, and when we say that, brothers, that's just not talking finances. That's any area God has given you more than what you need. That can be wisdom. That can be love. That can be uh, uh, knowledge. That can be gifts. If you know you have more than what you need in the area, you are supposed to disciple somebody. Are y'all listening to me? So if God is going to pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive, he's asking you to put a saucer underneath you so when it pours out, it flows on somebody. Every believer is supposed to have somebody that it's flowing on. Are y'all listening to me? Ooh, he wants you to have somebody and you place underneath you strategically and you let the glory of God flow on them. Amen. Jesus is hanging out with his disciples. And he's flowing on. Right. Are y'all listening to me? Mm -hmm. And you heard me he ask the question, who do men say that I am? He's doing a crowd check. Because really the only the virtue can really come out of you, brothers and sisters, is when you're around people to understand who you are. Amen. See, the woman with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I can be made whole. She touched it, and Jesus said, virtue has came out of me. They said, what do you mean? Who do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. Everybody's around you. Everybody's stalking you. He said, no, no, no. Somebody touched me, and power came out of me. And what brought that power out of Christ into that woman is that she understood who he was. Everybody's touching her. Yes. But some people don't understand who they touch it. Are y'all listening Ooh. to me? Do you understand you could be hanging around somebody great and don't even know it? Right. Yes, sir. But when you understand mm -hmm. who that individual is mm -hmm. and you hold them to that level, power comes out of him. Mm -hmm. If you know God has put something in you, you got to get around people that see who you are. Are y'all listening to me? Not see what you was, not see where you're at, but see who God has created you right. to be. And if they see who God has created you to be, power will flow out of you. Come on. Come on. If you come here expecting a move of God, expecting God to use me, power will flow out of you. Come on, Pastor. Uh, come on, Pastor. Oh, good God. My Jesus is hanging out with his disciples. Mm -hmm. You ask that question, and some say you're, 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 you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're other prophets. You say, that's okay, because they, they, don't, they don't have a relationship. They're not chilling with us anyway. Yes, sir. They haven't hang out. They're not hanging out with me. They're not eating with me. They're not laying down with me. They're not getting up with me. Y'all yeah. listen to me. It really doesn't matter with the outside. Say, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Why are we worried about what the world says about yeah. Jesus? They don't know yeah. Jesus anyway. Yeah. Amen. Right. Why are you worried about what a Muslim says or anybody else says about yeah. Jesus yeah. when they don't know? They don't know. Right. He says, who do you say that I am? The one that comes to church, the one that claims to have a relationship with God, the one that studies the Bible, the one that knows a couple of songs, the one that knows a couple of scriptures, the one who do you say that I am, though that I've called out of darkness and brought into my marvelous light, who do you say that I am? It does matter what the church says about Jesus. It does not matter what the world says, yeah. but it does matter what his bride says. Amen. Yes, his people. Uh, his people. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Are y'all listening? His Come government. Yes. No, that matters. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this is what disappoints me. Yes. Mm. Mm. In this passage, Jesus had 12 men around. 12 disciples. 12 disciples. Yes. And only one recognized mm -hmm. who he was. Come on, Pastor. They all ate with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. They all seen the miracles. Yeah. They all experienced his glory. Mm -hmm. They all seen him feed the 5,000 people mm -hmm. with two fish and five loaves. They seen him raise Jairus' daughter from the dead. They seen him raise Lazarus from the dead. They seen him turn water into wine, but yet only one. There's a lot of miracles in here. Yes, it is. If I just passed the mic, 
All of you can have a testimony how God saved you. Yes, right. Right. What God did for you. How he fed you. How he healed you. How he made a way. How he paid that bill. All of you have them. All of you have seen his power. Because that's why you're here, I hope. I'm here because I've seen him work. I'm here because I've seen him move. I'm here because I've seen him make Away, amen? amen. And I want to say that nothing to anybody like that, anybody that great, anybody that powerful, anybody that loving, I want to stay connected. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Uh, amen. You're teaching, man. Come on. Amen. Only one? Which was so strange last week is when I asked the question, only one said something. He's my everything. Oh. I'm going to say this. Come to know God. Yes, what you said. Don't just come to know church. Mm -hmm. Don't just come to know a service. Don't just come to know a religious rituals. Mm -hmm. But come mm -hmm. to know God. Because God is bigger than a service. Are y'all listening to me? God is bigger than a building. God is bigger than a denomination. God is bigger than a couple of songs. God is bigger than a man preaching a sermon. God is God. God created the heavens and the earth. God is the Alpha and the Omega. God formed, amen. That y'all don't know something. God formed man from the dust of the ground and to breathe into man's nostril and man became a living soul. Everything that exists exists because of God. And the sky exists because of God. The sun exists because of God. The Clouds exist because of God. The moon exists because of God. The seas exist because of God. The animals exist because of God. You exist because of God. Know Him. Know Him. If you want to know somebody important, know Him. If you want to know somebody that can change your life, good God. Who do man say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Christos, the Messiah. Christ means, brothers and sisters, the anointed one. Are y'all listening to yes. me? Yes. She's all right. She's she's a little mentally challenged. That's that's Pastor Flowers' daughter. She's all right. Pastor Flowers is with her. He says, "You are the Christ. Mm -hmm. You're the one we've been waiting for. Yes, yes. You're the one to bring us out of the oppression of our oppressor." Mm -hmm. That's what they were waiting for. They were waiting for the Christ, the one that God anointed, amen, to lift the hand of their oppressor. If you're being oppressed in any area, Jesus is in your life. Mm -hmm. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, sir. To lift the oppression. Mm -hmm. If you're being oppressed in your body, if you're being oppressed in your mind, if you're being oppressed in your finances, if you're being oppressed in your family, God is in your life not to add oppression, not to weigh you down with more. He's there to lift it off you. That's why we seek God, because God will lift it off you. Are y'all listening to me? God, that young girl, listen to me. I'm going to use this as a teaching example. That young girl used to sing up. That's right. And something jumped on her. Are y'all listening to me? But we believe, and I tell her, keep bringing her. I know sometimes she doesn't act right. Sometimes she does. But keep bringing her. Don't, because if anybody that's going to lift the devil off of her, it's going to have to be Jesus. Meditation came Meditation adds to it. Are, are y'all listening to me? But I serve a God that has the power to cure every disease, cast out every devil. Bring her. It will come out, yes. Because it will come out. Yes, sir. That's right. Good God Almighty. He says, You are the Christ, you are the Son of the Living God. You are God wrapped in flesh. You are God. You are Emmanuel, the God that is dwelling amongst us, the God that we can.